गाइस यू ऑल आर पुशिंग मी टू द लिमिट्स एंड आई एम एंजॉइंग इट वेलकम बैक गाइस अरुण दिस साइड अगेन एंड आई एम सो सॉरी दैट वी मिस्ड कपल ऑफ एपिसोड्स आई गेस आई वाज बिजी बट आई एम ट्राइंग वेरी हार्ड टू बी कमिटेड टू माय डेली डीबीए शो एंड लेट अस सी हाउ मेनी more days i won't skip the daily dba show i'll try my best keep commenting keep sending me your queries and i am actually loving this phase where i am right now helping lot of dbas with production uh, database related queries so they are sending me their production database issues and which my team is helping them in order to solve those issues like we recently helped one guy in data guard setup and we also helped one guy in performance tuning we helped the guy to improve the performance of one sql query in their environment i mean i love real time stuff but not to discourage any of the fresher dbas who are trying to learn the oracle database or trying uh, to get into dba world i still request you to continue to send me your queries to support at dbagenesis.com i'll try my best to answer as many questions as possible and i apologize for all the dbas whom i am not able to get back to in case i am missing some of your comments or probably i am not responding to some of your emails i apologize but that being said i'll try my best still in order to help as many of you as possible that being said guys let us start our today's episode with the first question of the day can data exist above high water mark I 100% feel like this has been asked by someone who is just trying to learn the Oracle database and see high watermark means it's the last level of like it's the last mark till where data ever existed inside the data block now high watermark it in itself denotes the highest level that the data was ever inserted into a data block right so how do you feel like there might be data above the high water mark i mean it's not possible correct so let's take if you talk about a river and let's take we are talking about the highest level of water that the river ever had that is like high water mark it's very simple so it means like how can you say that if Uh, we are saying high water mark was so and so feet let's take 500 feet so uh, how can we say that like river ever had water above 500 feet if that's the case then the high water mark would increase right so let's take if water goes to 600 feet then uh, the high water mark will change from 500 to 600 feet so honestly high water mark is the last level you take it like what is the max level of water that river or dam or your glass or your tank ever had that's the highest water mark so if water is flowing above the highest water mark the highest water mark or the high water mark will change to the new value now let us talk on the flip side so high water mark denotes that the highest level that data ever had inside a data block but does that mean that high water mark or data exists below high water mark there are two conditions data might exist or data might not exist now why it happens why it does not happen i had discussed about high water mark in i guess our previous episodes i would request you to watch those episodes to get to know the details about the high water mark that being said let's move on to the second question of the day i have two tables table a and table b table b structure is same as table a except that it has one extra column how can i copy records from table a into table b even though table b is having one extra column it's very simple see when you try to insert into a table by selecting records of another table right what happens insert into table b select star from table a example so this is what you run now the structures are little bit different okay so the table b is having one extra column so let's take if the table a is having four columns table b is also having four columns along with one more column so total like table b is having five columns but four columns are identical to the table a 
all right so the question is how can i insert the table a data into table b which is having one extra column it's very simple while you are using the insert statement you have to explicitly say the column name what i'll do is i'll put the link somewhere below this video so that you can insert or you can use that insert statement so it will be like something insert into table b and then you have to define the column names column one column two column three column four then select column values from table b i mean that's how it's done so while you are defining the insert statement you have to explicitly say the column names and then select those column values from the other table and you would be able to insert into the i think whatever table you have all right that being said let's move on to the next question i think this one was very simple and one of the application that i was working i can recollect now uh, they had this issue like they were trying to insert the data from the other table but what happened you know someday i'm not sure if it was a client's requirement or who did this so the table where we were trying to insert the data the structure got changed and a new column was added so all those insert statements were failing in the package and then we had to redo or rewrite those insert statements so for all the experienced dbas this is a great learning for all of you whenever you are developing applications or if you are involved into application level development or if you are a developer who is watching this episode i want you to note this whenever you are writing any packages any code for any kind of database not at all oracle database but any database you have to explicitly define the column name in all the insert statements okay don't go with select uh, or sorry don't go with insert into table b select star from table a so if the table b structure changes or table a structure changes those statements will fail so i recommend all of you all the developers be careful while you develop the code whether it is plsql procedure or any kind of code and for all the dbas if you are using any insert statements for practice for just learning purpose it's good but the real way to execute a insert statement is by defining the column names explicitly that being said let's move on to the next question difference between db file sequential read and db file scattered read i guess slowly i can see a lot of performance tuning questions in our daily db episode as far as i love these questions but the biggest issue is we need a separate session to explain these kind of topics like i mean i would love to explain but unfortunately this show is not designed to explain any topic in that depth so what i can do is i can help you guys in order to answer interview questions let's take if this question has been asked to you or if you are going to face this kind of question so understand this db file sequential read sequence right it has to go in a sequence so what happens is when your query is reading from the database index index so what happens when query is reading an index so index one record will be read and then it will pick up the block right the data block that it corresponds to next it will go to the next index value pick up the block so index block index block index block it is a sequential read right so whenever there is an index involved in a query the query will go in a sequence as per the index let's take we have a book okay and if i ask you to scan through all the chapters and let me know what are the page numbers what you will do you will go to the index go to the chapter 1 you will go to the index you will go to the chapter 2 you will go to the index you will go to the chapter 3 right so what you are doing you are going to the index and going to the page number right that's how you move through the book so that's what happens inside oracle if index is being used inside the query while querying the uh, table contents it will go from index block index block index block i think it's sounding like a music index block index block all right now what is db file scattered read let's say you have full table scan so oracle is authorized to read all the data inside the table or all the data from the disk so it will go in a scattered fashion because there is no guiding mechanism there is no index involved so oracle will pick up whichever block it finds as fast as possible because the the result 
has to be given to the user as fast as possible so oracle will move like in any direction like there is no fixed pattern as to which block will be picked up first oracle will try like whichever block is in the memory it will throw them out to the user whichever block is not in the memory it will go quickly grab those blocks and then give the output to the user so that's called scattered read like there is no guiding mechanism there is no kind of like sequence that is being followed by oracle in order to get the data to the user once again sequential read index block index block index block you can make it as a rhyming uh, or rhyme for yourself and when it comes to db file scattered read it's like oracle will try to run to get all the blocks from the disk as fast as possible because giving the output to the user as fast as possible is more important to the oracle that being said i guess that will help all of you guys and let us move on to the next question how can i upgrade from oracle 9201 32-bit to 11g 32-bit version all right before you upgrade and before i give you the direct upgrade path because i'm not going to give you and i plan it to keep as a dba challenge all right so for you to upgrade from any version to any version uh, i'm not going to talk about which version or from which version to which version you can upgrade or what is the upgrade path what i would request you is or let's take it as a dba challenge your challenge is to look at oracle upgrade matrix so there is something called as oracle upgrade matrix type it into google oracle upgrade matrix and then look into the google images all right so you will find great images which will talk about from which version to which version you can perform a direct database upgrade take this as a dba challenge and then all of you put down into the comments of this video as to like which is the intermediate version that 9201 database needs to be upgraded and from that intermediate version you can perform a direct upgrade to 11g version right so that being said take this as a dba challenge so i want all of you to go to google all the experienced dbas type into the google oracle upgrade matrix and look into the upgrade matrix find out which is the intermediate version you cannot perform a direct version of the uh, database from 9201 to 11g version okay i gave you a hint so there needs to be an intermediate version that you need to move on so what is that intermediate version comment below this video and i'll see you all in the comment section meanwhile let's move on to the last question of the day can i create db link between databases hosted on different operating system platforms i guess this is one of the smartest questions but i mean it's silly on the other hand see db links depend on the database connection the tns entries right so whenever you try to connect to any database via the db links db links use tns mechanism to connect to the database so why do you think that the operating system of the database will come into picture while connecting to the database i mean it won't come right at any given point of time if you are creating any db link the operating system of the underlying database does not make a difference because you are using the tns entries right so tns entries will connect and also tns entries are also independent of the operating system you configure your tns entries under the oracle home network admin location and you have a standard for configuring the listener and the tns entries until unless your database listeners and tns entries are perfectly fine you are able to connect to the target database the db links will work perfectly fine and by the way guys i think this is one of the great interview question i will try to ask this question to maybe new dbas when i am hiring and try to see what funny answers they will come with i mean i like this question by the way looks like somebody was asked this question in their interview now that being said guys i think this was amazing episode these questions were like a little bit tricky but i liked all these questions guys you all are pushing me to the limits and i'm enjoying it i guess very soon and by the way guys did you notice i put on a tab called as cloud on our website just log on to dbgenesis.com on the top you have a cloud like i am about to release cloud courses it's not yet live but i want is there is a small survey where you can go ahead and click on that link fill that form i'll get to know your requirements of the cloud like what's your confusions and doubts so that i can try to launch the courses the cloud courses 
in a way that suits your requirements. I already got a couple of people putting into the survey details and I want all of you, you guys who's watching, all of you to go to dbaygenesis.com, click on the cloud button, fill up the survey. Let's move on to the most important part that is the bonus question. But before that, I guess in the last episode, we didn't have a bonus question. And this time we do have a bonus question. So I will see you on the other side. All right, guys, I'm back and I have chosen this question as the bonus question because this is a problem with all the fresher DBAs and also some of the experienced DBAs. And the question goes something like this. Let me read it out for all of you. How can I prepare for Oracle 19C certification? I mean, guys, don't be fascinated or run behind the latest certifications that is being released by Oracle. First of all, I mean, whenever there is a new certification that is being released by Oracle, it does not mean that your old certification gets rejected or it is abandoned. It doesn't mean like that. Like you still are certified by Oracle on that particular version. For example, if you are an Oracle 11G OCP, that means you are certified for 11G version, right? And don't get confused with the 19C version. Like 18C is uh, just playing with the numbers of the 12C version. 12202 is 18C, 12203 is 19C, right? So just by looking at the numbers, don't get confused that 18C is different, 19C is different, or they are completely different databases. Not like that. I want you to focus, let's say if you are really interested to prepare for Oracle 19C certification, what I want you to do is pick up any Oracle 12C release to version material and start learning. That's more than enough because right now you really don't have material for preparing for Oracle 19C version. And also remember, you might have this question, if you are learning for or preparing for 12C release to version uh, certification, then how would you answer some of the questions related to Oracle 19C? Great question. I mean, credit goes to me. The 19C version, what I want you is prepare with the 12C release to version. And in the 19C version, you just read about the new features of Oracle 19C and that's more than enough. That will help you prepare for the 19C certification. That being said, one important thing guys, as I told earlier, it's not that you lose all the credibility if you are 11G certified or 10G certified, that means you are really certified for that particular version of the Oracle database. But if you want to upgrade your certification, make sure you are upgrading your skill set also. I mean, don't upgrade the certification because you want to show off in the interview or show off to your friends or you just want to have it just because it has been released. It doesn't make sense. If you are really working on 19C version, which I can guarantee that I don't think many of you would be working because currently I'm still seeing a lot of companies or our clients migrating from their 11G version to 12C version. So I don't think you would probably be working on the 19C version, but if in case you are, I wish you good luck. And that's the simplest way I can tell you as to how to prepare for the 19C version. Pick up any 12C release to version material also read through 19C new release or new features, done. You can appear for the 19C certification. That being said, guys, I'll take a leave. See you, bye-bye, and I will meet you all in the next episode. Bye for now.